Well, of course, so many folks are working, going to school, are spending so much more time at home than they have due to this uh, pandemic. I thought we should check in with the folks from the National Fire Protection Association and to get some tips and advice on how to do that safely. Uh, so Lorraine Carley from the NFPA right here in Quincy has agreed to join us uh, once again here in the program to tell us how to do that. Hey, Lorraine, good to see you. Hi, Joe. How are you? It is good to see you as well. I know Thanks it's been a little while. Out. Yeah, you're very welcome. Yeah, our yeah. Um, of course, uh, the NFPA, our, our uh, neighbors here in Quincy, you've been uh, in the city now for, gosh, how long? Oh, probably in the city for over 30 years, but we have been in the Boston area. We were founded in 1896, so we're approaching our 125th anniversary next year. So I've uh, been around a long time. Yeah, for sure. Um, and of course, setting the standard uh, for safety guidelines uh, nationally and internationally, right? Yes, we have quite a, quite a reach. As I said, we're almost 125 years old and people throughout the world use NFPA information, whether that's our codes and standards, our research, or our public education information to keep them and their families safer from fires and, and other hazards as well. Sure. So as I mentioned, uh, you know, everybody's stuck at home now, uh, one way or another. So we're doing uh, more online uh, work like you and I are doing right now. And, uh, a lot of folks have become, uh, you know, automatic overnight bakers. So folks are in the yeah. kitchen a lot more and lots more things are plugged in. Appliances are working overtime. So I thought we should check in and yeah. see what the NFPA is, uh, is doing to help folks stay safe. Yeah, it's, it's really been an interesting phenomenon that we've seen. Obviously, we know people are staying at home. Um, we anecdotally have seen, unfortunately, more fires, a lot of cooking-related fires because uh, people are at home. They're cooking more. Uh, they're not doing as much at all of, of going out to restaurants. So we've seen a number of state fire marshals around the country uh, issue additional warnings and safety tips around cooking. Uh, NFPA has been very aggressive about putting out all of this information so that can, people can use it and keep themselves safer. Um, in general, cooking is the leading cause of home fires, but we tend to see those numbers uh, spike around the winter holidays, Thanksgiving, when people are typically home doing cooking, uh, Christmas, New Year's Eve. Those tend to be our higher days for cooking fires. Um, but as you mentioned, with more people at home doing more cooking, uh, we are seeing those increases in cooking fires. Uh, but those are also very easy fires to prevent if you pay attention to what you're doing in the kitchen. Uh, the leading cause of those cooking fires tends to be unattended cooking. Uh, so people being easily distracted, walking away, and we know there's a lot going on in homes today. Uh, people are working, people are teaching their kids, uh, helping them with their homework, lots of things going on at home, so it's very easy to, to get distracted. So uh, that big safety tip is to, to stay in the kitchen and, and pay attention if, if you're cooking. Um, sure. One of the other things we often see too with cooking is things that are left too close to the to the stove top so whether it's uh, food packaging paper towels uh, the dish towels so things like that to, to keep away from from the cooking area yeah um is it a good idea to have a, a fire extinguisher handy nearby in the kitchen yeah, a lot of times what we say, we do issue some caution around the use of uh, fire extinguishers. The, the best thing to do is if you have a home fire is to call 911 and get out safely. Uh, a lot of times fire extinguishers in the, cook in the kitchen can be even more dangerous, particularly if you have a grease fire because you're going to splatter that hot liquid all over the place. Um, one thing to think about with cooking uh, is to prepare your area ahead of time and have a lid handy so that if you do have a fire on the stove top, you can shut off the burner and slide that lid and that will uh, usually suffocate uh, the fire. But if it gets out of hand, again, the best course of action is to call 911 and get out of the home uh, immediately. Sure. I'm thinking even too. Call, yeah, even calling the, the fire department from outside of the home. The best thing is get out quickly uh, because what we do find these days is that 
uh, kitchen fires, home fires in general, uh, spread really fast. They spread much faster than they did years ago. Uh, so you have a very short amount of time to escape. Yeah. And of course, uh, hopefully better weather is uh, coming soon. So maybe folks will be taking their cooking out of doors. I know there are some special uh, safety measures to use around grills, both charcoal um, and propane as well. Yeah, we've actually started talking about that at NFPA because we've spent the last couple of months telling people how to be safe in the kitchen. And now, as you say, uh, hopefully we'll get some nice warm weather and Memorial Day is coming. And so we will likely see more people going to their grills for, for dinner and for cooking. So um, propane, uh, make sure that you, you check your, your gas grill before you spark it up for the first time this season. Make sure that the, the hoses and the connections are all good. You can check those hoses by uh, just putting some soapy water solution on them. And if air is escaping and you see those bubbles, uh, that you'll know that that gas is escaping and you want to get that, that fixed. Uh, but cleaning it, making sure it's in good order, having it set up away from your home. Uh, then the, some of those same tips that we talk about in the kitchen, making sure that the area is free from anything that can burn, keeping kids and pets away from your grill, um, and just paying attention when you're cooking. Sure, yeah. And then uh, with charcoal grills, I know the, um, the, the coals uh, themselves are the real issue after you're done mostly, right? Yeah, and making sure that they're totally extinguished before you dispose of them, dispose of them in a steel container, uh, make sure that there's no embers or anything. Can we talk a little bit, Lorraine, about um, electrical safety in the home? You know, the appliances are going uh, a lot more often, uh, home computers and <laughs> things of that nature, so a lot more things are plugged in that might normally be uh, maybe with – uh, power strips or, you know, multiple outlets, so uh, things to be concerned about, I'm sure. Yeah, that's another area of uh, caution is as we're working from home, we probably have a lot of things running that we don't typically have during the course of the day when we used to leave to go to the office. So um, we've got computers, we've got chargers, we've got a lot of uh, cords going on. Uh, May is actually electrical safety month, so it's a good opportunity to remind people of some of the ways that they can keep themselves safe um, any time of the year but like you say as people are working at home one of the big things is to not overload your outlets uh, use power strips uh, make sure that if any of your outlets feel warm that you get those checked out uh, so that you you won't have an accident uh, making sure that you're not running cords uh, extension cord to extension cord uh, so plug things directly into outlets where you can or into those power strips. Uh, the overloading is a big issue, so pay attention to that. And like I said, if a, a device is getting hot or uh, your charging device is getting hot, unplug those, let them cool down, make sure that that's not a problem. Yeah, there was, I'm sure you're aware, just a, a fire connected to a charger and a hoverboard, I think, in Kingston not too long ago. So um, it's still it's still an issue for sure. It still is an issue. Those types of batteries that we tend to see in a lot of our new electronic equipment, uh, the lithium ion batteries, they, they pack a lot of uh, power into a small space. So right. they can get hot, uh, they can cause fires, so just be uh, really careful and paying attention to when you have those those plugged in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, more time at home might mean you're smoking, if you are a smoker, more inside the house. That's another big cause of fires, I know. Smoking does continue to be the leading cause of home fire deaths. The leading and cause, so, wow. uh, Making sure that of uh, home fire deaths, yes. You know, every once in a while, something creeps ahead of it, but it's still up there as a leading cause. Mm -hmm. uh, from time to time, we see heating take over for a little bit, but um, consistently smoking leads to a lot of fire deaths. Uh, so we do tell people, if you're smoking and can smoke outside, smoke outside. Uh, make sure those cigarette butts are fully extinguished. And if you are smoking outside, Make sure you extinguish them in a good ashtray or receptacle or something because oftentimes we see with outside smoking is that um, they get tossed into mulch or potted plants and, and cause a fire that way. 
Um, and if you're smoking inside, uh, same thing, using the proper kinds of ashtrays and disposing of them appropriately. Sure. And, you know, probably the number one thing to remind people about is the number one item of defense for fires is a smoke detector, right? Yeah. You know, the best things that you can do in your home is to have working smoke alarms. And you want to have working smoke alarms on every level of your home, inside each bedroom and outside each sleeping area. That way um, you'll have the, that early warning so that you can escape quickly. Uh, the other thing is having a home escape plan, develop the plan, practice the plan, um, identifying two ways out of each room in your home, identifying a meeting spot outside so that in the event that that smoke alarm goes off, everybody knows what to do and how to get out. Uh, and the other thing uh, is home fire sprinklers. We're very used to seeing sprinklers in commercial buildings and high-rise residential buildings, hotels, things of that nature. Uh, we need to get those more commonplace in homes, in new one and two family homes, uh, because smoke alarms give you that early warning and give your family more time to escape by keeping that fire small. Uh, next week is actually Home Fire Sprinkler Week, which oh. is an event that NFPA, in conjunction with the Home Fire Sprinkler Coalition, established three years ago. Uh, so for the last couple of years, we've done live side-by-side -side burn demonstrations around the country. But this year, because um, everybody is at home, uh, makes it impossible to do those live demonstrations, we're actually doing uh, virtual events where we'll be showing side-by-side uh, -side burn demonstrations on a Facebook Live uh, next Wednesday. Uh, we're encouraging people that uh, safety professionals to share those messages over the course of next week on the value of home fire sprinklers and uh, the role that they will play in dramatically reducing the fire problem uh, in this country and in other places as well. Hmm, interesting. Okay, good to know. Yeah. So that's on the NFPA Facebook page? Uh, it will actually be, you'll be able to get to it through the NFPA Facebook page, but we're working with Firehouse Magazine on Wednesday at uh, 11 a.m. And they will do this uh, live event and that will have this video of a uh, living room fire with and without sprinklers. And you'll be able to see both the power of fire, but also how quickly home fire sprinklers can extinguish a fire uh, or keep it very small so that it can save lives and property. Oh, okay. Very good. Can an older home be retrofitted with sprinklers or does it have to be a new construction? Yeah, you, you can retrofit a home with home fire sprinklers. It's a little more complicated. Mm. Uh, so obviously, if people want to do that, that's great. We'll make them safer. Um, but our outreach and advocacy effort is around trying to get uh, new homes, new one and two family homes built with sprinklers. And if we can do that, we will save um, countless lives for generations to come because the majority of deaths today are happening in homes. Fire problem is in home fires. So we need to do everything we can uh, to reduce that number. So what we're doing today, Joe, and talking about what families can do and taking those preventive steps um, is critical. Having smoke alarms, working smoke alarms in your home and that escape plan, but adding that extra protection of home fire sprinklers if you're building or doing a major remodel to a home. Those are all of the pieces that are going to keep you and your family safer from fire. Sure. I know, I know too, that the NFPA frequently reaches out uh, in the public schools and private schools as well, for that matter, to educate young yeah. people because they're uh, kind of the, uh, the, the flag holders, if you will, in, in the home, right? Absolutely. You know, children are great receivers of the fire safety message, but they're also great deliverers of mm -hmm. the message. So when they learn about safety in school and they go home and tell their parents that you know we need to make sure we have smoke alarms and we need to practice our escape plan uh, so a lot of our activity is focused on young children uh, we have Sparky the fire dog as our mask so he does a lot of work uh, 
around the year going to schools and ha he has his own Facebook page, he has his own website. Uh, and that's another interesting thing that we've seen over the last couple of months as families have been at home uh, teaching their children on behalf of, uh, you know, homeschooling and assisting teachers. We've seen a real increase in the number of people that are visiting Sparky's webpage because he's got some great at-home activities, he's got some activities that are tied to the core curriculum for schools around math and reading. Uh, so it becomes a win-win. They're learning their math and their reading, but they're also uh, getting the fire safety message. Uh, Sparky also has some great apps um, that we've seen, again, an increase in people uh, to entertain kids, but also get fire safety messages. Well, that's wonderful. It's good to hear um, putting a silver lining to, to, to all of this and using time effectively. That's great. Yeah, it, it's been really interesting because we often talk about how successful we have been in reducing the fire problem. We used to see seven or 8,000 fire deaths a year. Now we see less than 3,000. Uh, but because of that, we all also see a bit of complacency that people yeah. don't think they're going to have a fire uh, they're less likely to have seen somebody or know somebody that's had a fire uh, so this has been given a, a little bit of a rejuvenation to uh, public safety messages and a new interest in fire safety messages that we hope will continue beyond this pandemic that um, people start to think a little bit more about their their own safety on a lot of fronts uh, and make sure that they're doing what they can because everybody also has a, a responsibility in keeping themselves sure what what uh, typically Lorraine do you advise folks to kind of grab and run out the house with when there is a fire? What's a, what's a critical thing that they should have with them? Um, their phone, if they can, and it's easily accessible so that they can call 911. But the reality is if that smoke alarm goes off, the, the best thing that you can do is get your children and get out of the home. And that's why that uh, escape plan development and practice is really important uh, because even though, like I said, the number of uh, home fire deaths has gone down over the years, the other scary statistic that we've seen is that because of the way we build our homes today with lightweight construction and the things that we put in our homes, a lot of synthetics and electronics, which are very different than the homes that had heavy furniture, furnishings, heavy wood furnitures, then burned a little bit slower. You used to have about seven or eight minutes to escape a home fire if you had one. Today, that number is down to about two or three minutes. Wow. So you really need to get out quickly because we'd see homes going to flash over. And flash over is that point when everything is so hot that it's, and we see, uh, plate rooms going to flash over in, in two minutes or sometimes even less because mm -hmm. of uh, the contents in those rooms. Sure. I guess because of the time of year, we should talk a little bit about um, fire safety outdoors. I know that uh, brush fire season could be upon us soon, although it's been pretty wet lately, but, uh, <laughs> you know, um, things are still pretty dry from the winter. The vegetation's not fully out yet, so there's there's a concern, I know. Yeah, th there's always a concern of outdoor fires. Um, we have had a particularly wet spring, but um, that will probably dry out soon when we get some warmer and hotter weather. Uh, so just making sure that you're cleaning up the debris around your home, um, twigs, leaves from the fall, grass, being very careful with outdoor fires, whether that's a fire pit, your outdoor grill, um, not using consumer fireworks, all of those things have the potential for igniting um, dry brush and grass. Absolutely. Um, are there some good resources that you could refer folks to uh, for, to get more sure. so if, Yeah, if people want more information on fire safety in general, they can go to NFPA's website, which is nfpa.org. They can also go to sparky.org uh, and get some additional information for kids and families and some great activities to, to use while we're all staying at home. Great. Anything else you think we should add, Lorraine? 
I think we covered a lot of it, Joe. I think we're in good shape. I agree. Yeah, I really appreciate your time. So good to, to talk to you and, uh, and hopefully we can do it in person soon. Likewise, and I look forward to that. <laughs> All right, stay safe. All right, thanks. You too. Bye-bye.